So we had uh, time series x d um, Chancellor function 1 minus 0.8 to b divided by 1 minus 0.16 times 80 80 is the value component. Standard assumptions apply normal, zero, mean, and variance multiplied a, typically any value. Um, we started with R1 1 1. I showed you how to do in R. Um, we rewrote it as MA infinity using no division. This time we're going to rewrite 80 in terms of AR infinity. I have a question in mind, but we'll save that for later. Um, Yes, I just flipped it. So the process is exactly the same. What we would do is do long division again for this part right here, because you can go back and forth. Um, And just like last time, I'm writing it in increasing or decreasing powers of B, and I'm going to replace that B by X so that you can relate it to algebra. So we can put it as X for now, change it back to B, and it's how it works. So long division, we always put this term and then we subtract. We've got to multiply negative 0.8 to x by something to get uh, a value. So, false. What? Just should it just be the inverse of what we used last time? To, to get the 0.16 into the oh, negative. So, okay, I see what you're saying. This is 1 over 5.125, which would be 0.19. Approximately. Um, and then we would have 0.195. Subtract the two, that will go away, and you will have point nine eight zero nine. Then we could write it using the standard long division way, which is um, Yeah, the next step. 
destroyed as a series. We rewrite it as a series, so we have point one nine five plus point eight zero five times one minus point eighteen x in height, which is a geometric series, some infinite sum. So I will have one plus point eight two squared. Let's go in the end of the thing. Point eight two plus point eight two squared. Dot dot dot. We don't want to do all that. So we can simply write it as a sum. Point one nine five plus point eight zero five. Sum I. Zero to infinity point eight two raised to five. Getting the uh, backwards operator. The backwards operator. Oh. And speed race. Okay. I change the x flat to b. Um, last time we split the first term, so 0 0.195 plus 0 0.805, um, when i is equal to 0, I will simply end up having 1 plus the remaining part of the series, Point A to I, B base I, and we are multiplying by X T over here. So let's not forget the X T part. So on the left hand side we have this term times X T. Right hand side is equal to A T. I'll write it over here. So. This is the part we solved. It's right there. Point one nine five plus point eight zero five. One plus some i equals one to infinity. Point eight two raise i erase i. Entire thing multiplied by x t. And that would equal to 80. Good. Well, x thing still remains outside. Um, point one nine five. Let's distribute that 0.805 inside, so 0.805 plus 0.805, sum i equals 1 to infinity, 0.82 raised i, b i, or b raised i. And that was equal to 80. Good. If I expand this, I'll end up having xt 0 0.195 plus 0 0.805 is 1 plus 0 0.805 times. That's then point eight two times B. Second term point eight zero five point eight two squared times B squared. We'll it's finding the series out. Um, plus point eight zero five times point eight two raised through. We get something like that. 
keeps on going, and that was equal to a circle T. Well, you can tell me how to calculate it. That one's easy, that is approximately 0.6. No, six, two. You have the count. Six, six. Six, six. The next one is point approximately point six five, not six nine five point eight, point four eight something. Point four. Point five four. Five four. Point eight times point eight two cubed of four point four point four four four. We'll leave it as point four four eight cubed plus dot 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 equals a sub t. If I distribute x t, I'll have x t plus point six six. X T B plus point I four X T four B squared X T point four four B cubed X T plus dot 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 is eighteen. I want to get rid of the backwards operator. What should I do? So that it applies, I'd end up having xt plus 0.66 xt minus 1 plus 0.54 xt minus 2 plus 0.44 xt minus 3 plus dot 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 equals nt. What happened to the xt times b? Just come back to xt. This one, xt minus one. Backwards operator. Good. Now, do we see all the phi weight or psi weight? Yes. If you rewrite it as the sum, which probably was here, um, I can simply put it, uh, write it as. Uh, sum k equals zero to infinity. The positive part we used psi, correct? Okay, doesn't matter. Psi k and x t minus k equals eighty. There's a concise version of pricing it where psi zero is one, psi one, point six six, psi two, point five four, psi three, point four four, and so on. What is happening to the coefficients? It's going down. Do you believe the series is absolutely solvable? Yes. So is it going to be stationary? Yes. Yes. Okay. Question I'm early. Did I have to do long division? I wrote it this way, but my question is Is it necessary that we do long division? Error. I don't think so. You could just divide the, the coefficients for b, and then depending on which way you're doing it, you can do the reciprocal going the other way, and then you subtract it from b. 
Divine coefficients of B. What do you mean? The 0.16 and the 0.82. No way. It's bad algebra. Well, it would be the same when we're doing the long division. You get the same thing. And then you subtract it from one. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, but so you're doing the same thing, but just without. But now it's even steps. thinking about the division yeah. part. Is there a different way of doing it? Without even thinking about division. Hence, we have applied it a couple of times already. I don't this is what you're looking for, but uh, can you multiply the whole thing by whatever's on the denominator and then solve it in quadratic? Oh, you do a hit. Maybe you will see that. Um, one minus point one six b times <laughs> one over one minus point eight two b. X b equals eighteen. Only have to space. Breaking my heart is. We just did it. We had something over 1 minus 0. 0.82b and then we. Oh, that's too much experience. It's just a series, right? I could have started right here, put it as, as a series and gone from there. Yes? But why did we do long division? In this case, it is easy. But say, for instance, you had an AR. Or arma two two mod, then you won't have a polynomial that is uh, of degree one. You would have a quadratic uh, denominator. If you ha had an AR three three, you would have a cubic one. So in those cases, the only thing that you can do is long division. Good. Um, most processes don't need a whole lot of uh, parameters given the AR infinity part um, and ARMA 1 1 that we started with, which should we use? You have a series and one, you can either use ARMA 1 1 or you can use AR infinity. Which one should you use? Why? I forget what you call it exactly, but the uh, because it depends on less steps. It's not steps, parameters, coefficients, weight. Uh, principle or parsimony. We always want a parsimonious model in the sense fewer the coefficients, the better. If you can't explain something with two, four coefficients, and if you can't explain the same series with 100 coefficients, which is the smart thing to do? Four, right? So we need to go for a fast bonus model. So I'm just showing this over here because we can use this to come up with covariances and things like that. Good. Are we clear? Okay. Um, My mind always goes to traces because you know, it's a caustic process, but I'm referring to a series. I showed you what a non stationary series is at the very last lecture or so. Yes. Um, non stationarity typically happens when you have a unit group. Um, Unit roots result in non stationarity, and we want roots to lie outside the unit circle. 
um, for it to be a stationary process. But just because you have unit roots and series is not stationary, it doesn't mean you have to pass it back to me. Um, there are processes such as uh, Osteen Ullenbeck Finance. Uh, it's a process that pops up quite often in stock market. Um, it's a non stationary series, but is it possible to model them? Yes. Um, what do we do? The model is called a Um The I part is integrated. That all means it's more like a summation. So, a Riemann, the I stands for integrated. What is our standard equation for an armor model? You can look in your notes. Goal is to define a non-stationary series. Do keep in mind this is not the only way. There are plenty of other uh, models. All the names they come up with to this day it fascinates me. It's got arch, gosh, dar, dharma. It's not like dharma as in religion dharma, but. Dar, Dharma, Arch, Gaj, Integrated Gaj, keeps on going. Uh, I don't know if I can get to Arch and Gaj, but uh, there are a whole bunch of forms. For starters, let's stick with a Riemann. This is the model that one would fit if we have um, non stationary So, okay. But I'm trying to stick with the books notation, so we've uh, got phi, we've got psi, we've got theta. This is kasa. And then the Greek letter, no, you know. Uh, sometimes I've got to go back and look at well, how do we pronounce this? Um, there is Katai, there is Kathi, Eta, Beta, Gamma, Alpha, it just keeps on getting. Um, do we see the difference? We just have to make the connection between the two. If you take phi of phi and multiply it by 1 minus phi raised d, then that would equal to phi, or whatever that is. Um, do put a note in the text, or I might call this w. Should we just use WT? It doesn't matter, right? I like to keep it as simple. Okay, so we have, but I put a note, and but of course, there's W sub T, I believe. Um, it's been a while since I've been happy. V of V times 1 minus V raised D. Long, long time ago, we did. Um, Learn about one minus b. It was in the homework also. I'll give you a hint. It's got something to do with the child. Jeff. Oh, I'm sorry. Andres, Andres. Are you especially? Okay, Andres. The difference. 
Okay, what difference? Forward, backward, backward difference operator. Okay, simply the backward difference operator. We used upside down triangle. It's that fancy word. Now look. Good. Um, one minus B is the backward difference operator that will give us uh, that expression. Why do we call it backward difference? Um, side note, this is just a professional memory. If I did x d times 1 minus b, I'd end up getting x d minus b times x d, which is x d minus 1. Do we agree? Backward difference. x d minus the previous one. Okay. That d is the order of the integrated part. Um, oftentimes, D doesn't exceed a form. I'll be surprised if it went past three. Um, so common value is zero, one, two. Um, usually, um, D could be zero, one, two. Here's a question. If D is equal to zero, uh, our expression is going to reduce to something simple. What is it? R this would simply be the R normal. Why? Well, if D is zero, it is an operator, but we are going to treat it as a variable. Upside down triangle, triangle rate zero, one. So I simply go back to C or P, which will take me back to an honorable. So it's is simply honor B three. Good. When we write it over here. But more to start because all I'm doing is giving it a name. Alma PQ is the same um, E zero Q. Good. Um, but that good point. Is that the arima? Yeah. I'm asking. Oh. So since I have alma PQ and I have alma P0 Q, I'm adding a new value, a new parameter in there. That corresponds to the integrated part. So P order of ARQ order of MA0 would simply be the big way or um, Order of distancing. So in this case, it is three minutes. A zero. Good. Um, other cases. If I have a reamer P one Q, P two Q, is it possible to come up with an armor? Uh, representation, absolutely. We have all these other we get to tell us all that thing. Um, we would simply write it as a reamer B, D, Q. It's like that chicken restaurant. So last time I used a rima when I simulate it because a rima is the general uh, specification. If d becomes zero, 
only when it becomes armed. Um, that's all. I'll wait here. Um, we can write things in an interchangeable manner. Um, for example, just like we did here, I can divide by 1 minus b raised d and express it as a sum on this side, as a sum on that side. It's the same process. Um, let's move further into it. Uh, doing this chapter one stuff over and over. But are we clear about counting functions, about phi of phi, theta of phi, the of phi? Okay, good introduction. Um, chapter two deals with some theoretical stuff, some of the which I kindly started a credit. Expectation, yes, do we remember that? I expect you to know about expectation. Bad, but. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anytime you see E, I said it can replace it by So when you see expectation of X, an easier way or easier thing to relate this to will be you. Very good, it is me, but what is E? Mean, theoretical mean, it is the parameter probably that you do not know, but if you want to easily remember what that is, take that E, replace the entire thing by a sideways step. I equals one, two, N, whatever N, and put that side. So E simply moves uh, or becomes that easier way to remember. We have used the word stationary time and time and time again. Um, but what is stationarity? Well, I've given you the definition, um, or I've given you an example for stationarity. I know the stationary series we saw in the simulation. Um, but how do we know something is stationary or not theoretically? Uh, there are conditions. Um, they have XP. XP minus one, XP minus two. Those are all the time variables. All of them are random. Reason being, each observation that you make has a T in it. So the random component is always there. Um, And if you have X A um, dependent on X T minus one, X T minus two, the way we write it X T plus the dash, X T minus one, X T minus two from the top. This simply means X T depends on all of those. People who took 3162, what does that remind you of? So, 
probability of x state is going to depend on all the previous values, right? Um, that is simply a condition of probability. What is an extension of condition of probability? We started with probability. What is the next step? Start with the letter D. Conditional distribution. What is the difference between, you know, probability and distribution? So it is a function, correct? Which would mean I have a whole range of values. I'm not looking at a single value. Probability, we're finding for one event, one outcome. Here, I'm going to look for all of us that. Um, so the condition is this. We don't know probability theory, that's fine. Uh, we can learn now. We're not going to derive stuff here. So that is a conditional probability or xd depends on xd minus one xd minus two, etc. Not a conditional probability. But if I write it this way, same event as I'm saying that this is a conditional distribution. Okay? Because I'm going to define for all values for x. For something to for a series to be stationary. Um, Let's start with this. X to minus one, X to minus two, X to minus three. This is not a conditional distribution, which is why I wrote that. Um, there is a difference between the two. Here we are saying, well, the distribution of X T depends on all the previous values. Here, it is just the distribution of all of them put together, put together, what's the name? Very good, John distribution. They are not the same. So it is a joint distribution of x in minus one, x in minus two, dot dot dot, keeps on going. That said, so this is the thing and that matters a lot. The joint distribution. X T minus one, X T minus two, X T minus three, not dot dot, keep on going. Um, is the same as X T minus one plus K, X T minus two plus K, X T minus three plus K, dot dot dot. In today's day, one can use H. Did we use H? I think so. Instead of H, this way, connect the dots. H, H, H. What is H? So, for any value of H, uh, for H, uh, which is that whole number, for any H, H, 
whole numbers. Um, the joint distribution of this and the joint distribution of that must be the same, no matter what k and h you pick. Do you think that that is an easy task to do? Those who did uh, probability and statistics know the pain that's involved in finding a joint distribution for two random variables. Here, infinitely many, even if you say I have an AR5 model, you have five variables. Joint distribution of five variables, painful. So, what we are saying is not only it should satisfy for the five variables that you start with, it has to be the same in distribution to any uh, set of variables if I change the lab. Not an easy task. It is not something that one would want to verify. If they want to. No, actually, in their sound mind would do it, but then an actuary doesn't have a sound mind. <laughs> and so they're in the distance there. Um, this. And then wait. It's what we call a strict sense stationality condition. Stationality in the strictest sense possible. This is not something that we would be able to do in all cases. Even I wouldn't know it because the derivations get tricky. So what we rather do is go for something simpler. We rather go for weak sense or wide sense um, stationarity. Um, Mathematician or statistician say we go for weak sense. Wide sense is something that's used in electrical engineering, signal processing. Um, they mean the same. I say to Marshall, you say to myself, we'll talk about the same thing. So, what is the condition? One. Expectation of XP is new, i.e., it is a constant for all C. Remember, I mentioned this very first, the second day of classes. I have a constant E, I can subtract that. If I don't have a constant E, I have a process that's going all over the place. Obviously, this is an easy condition to verify. That is hard, but something that will do the job at this does is this. That's the page. H could be either positive, negative, could be matter. Start with the letter C. Covariance, specifically what kind? We all like to drive it. Driving covariance. Auto covariance. Um, so auto covariance, XD, comma, XD plus H. If H is positive, that's fine. Negative, that's fine. So if we have gamma H, um, this depends only on H. It depends on the lab, it does not depend on time. Good. That should also 
make sense, correct? If two things are correlated for any H, let's start with H equals negative one. So I have XT correlated with XT minus one. And I want it to be independent of time and dependent only on the life. Um, and then I move on to XT minus one and uh, XT minus T. I want it to be independent of time, depend only on the life. And I keep on moving every single step. They are related, but they are independent of time. In other words, they don't vary with time. If there is a variance, but it doesn't vary with time, then it is stationary. Correct? That's what stationary means. So if these two conditions are satisfied, then we call it a stationary process. Going back to that original uh, picture that I started with a while ago, I had an initial level and I showed you things go back and forth about that level. Um, so there we've got variability, but um, they don't vary with time. There is variance, but things don't go like that, like that random walk simulation. Are we clear? If we, does gamma need to be a certain value to be stationary? No, it just has to be independent of uh, time. 